Hi Capricorn, welcome to Carol's Universe Tarot Readings, Tarot Readings from the Heart. Hope you guys are really, really well. So today is your uh, sixth month going from July. The energies I can see coming in for you from July through to December 2016 Love Forecast. Now, I've already pre-laid the cards because I found it was taking me too long, especially with these readings, to shuffle on screen, lay the cards, and there's 18 of them because I devise at times my own spreads. Uh, it starts up initially as a nine card spread and when I was sort of trolling this reading I was fine with the nine cards. It showed up a story which is fine but then I wanted to add other cards to it, clarifiers or just additional cards to kind of open the story up okay while we've got certain positions in other pla in, in certain places. And what I found was with the readings, I was discovering that sometimes there were three stories running through a reading. And I think it's kind of a good way to do it, especially for me, because it allows me to open up the reading a little bit more. So it doesn't mean that, you know, there's one set of energies or there's one story running through the sixth month that might just apply to one section of my audience. I really wanted to open up the reading so that it gave a chance for anybody else who might be experiencing a different energy uh, that they might be experiencing, uh, you know, just something different and that they could kind of connect with. And I, I, I just found that what I'm asking for now when I'm shuffling and meditating on the cards is the universe to give advice more than anything uh, through the reading. So uh, this is for six months. There are three stories running through. So there's six cards to the right, to the left, sorry, six cards in the middle and six cards to the right. Okay, and each uh, location will designate... A different story from some of the cards they will interrelate so it could be maybe a couple of cards from the third story will interrelate with cards from the second story second story maybe three cards will interrelate from the cards of the first story if that makes sense uh, you'll see as we go along anyway but just follow okay so if I say there's divorce in one story but there's a happy ending in another whichever applies to you over the next six months it applies to you okay so don't come back saying but I thought you'd be married and now there's divorce. Well, it's another story that shows marriage and it's another story that shows divorce. Just want to kind of get that out there before I start. So this is for Capricorn, Sun, Moon and also Rising signs. Let me just get myself... Oh, I need a big comfy chair. Because I had to switch the room around the other day, the living room, just so I could have the cards on the table while I'm talking to you guys. So, the first story that I was seeing... Uh, in the cards, Capricorn, for your love lives, for some of you guys. I feel that for some of you guys, um, you know, it's either a marriage or it's a commitment. It's, it's definitely, I feel, a, a relationship in the first story that I'm seeing. So for you guys who are in a committed relationship, you're with someone, you're either married, you're cohabitating, or you're simply in a, you know, you're simply on a, in a long-standing relationship, whether that's months or years or whatever it is, I'm seeing that you're going to be coming out of a time of difficulties, okay? For some of you, it might be over the next six months or even prior to that, that you've not been able to dedicate as much time to your relationship. And I say this because we've got the ten of wands that showed first, along with judgment. Now, the beauty in these two cards is that you know, when you do the tarot, uh, one of the important things to do, especially with, say for example, you're doing a spread and you pull one card, ten of wands, it shows struggle. Well, what happens after the struggle? Because the tens mean a time of, uh, a time is coming to an end and there's something new beginning. And for me, with judgment, it shows the new beginning. It shows, when you get to judgment, it's about uh, release. So, judgment card can mean that a judgment is made on something. Judgment card can mean that you're entering into a new phase of your life. You're coming out of... Judgment can mean coming out of illness. Uh, it can mean uh, awakenings. So, waking up to a certain part of your life that you need, you know need some adjustments. And you now have the, the, the way is now smooth and it's clear in order to achieve that. Uh, judgment can mean that you are you know, released from a difficult situation and now you're free and you're ready to, you know, grasp and enjoy life. It's a second chance card. It can mean reunions, you know, of a relationship, that type of thing. But I feel that, uh, you know, if you had something like the Two of Cups and Judgment or Six of Cups and Judgment, it can often mean 
uh, a reconnection. Because judgment can also be seen as a soulmate card too. I feel with the Ten of Wands preceding that. And because the Ten of Wands, you know, for some of you guys, there will have been struggle within a relationship. Because when you've got the Ten of Wands, you're really kind of fighting. It's a fighting card. It's fighting against, uh, you know, these Ten Heavy Wands. It's a difficult burden to carry. And for some of you guys, you will have experienced a burden within your relationship. But you're going to be coming out of that. And I don't feel that you're going to be coming out of that as such, uh, especially for the people that remain in relationships, the same relationships that you have now over the next six months. I feel it will mean a resurgence and a reignition of love and passion and happiness. But it comes not through saying to your partner, you know, we've been going through some really difficult times in our relationship. Bam, let's just start again. It, that's not the way it works a lot of the time. Sometimes where there has been destruction or difficulty in a relationship, uh, Capricorn, some moon and rising signs, it takes time to rebuild that happiness. It takes time to rebuild that trust. And I do feel that over the next six months, it's going to take time to rebuild whatever has been affected in your relationships. I, I, I was so happy when I saw these two cards show up together first, because for me, Ten of Wands is the burden card. It's when you're carrying a heavy burden. Now, so for some of you, it might be that you didn't have enough time to dedicate to your partner. It might be that you have, you know, household chores, you've got the children, you've got work. When you get to Ten of Wands, it's about carrying many responsibilities. So that can be many things that you're doing at any one time. And because you're so involved, if you look at this guy, his head is completely buried in that Ten of Wands. So he's kind of oblivious to everything else. The only thing that he's focusing on is getting these ten wands to where they need to go. And that's it. So for some of you guys, it might be a case of if you're in a relationship, there's been some struggle. Maybe you've not had enough time for your partner. You've been struggling with other things. You've been trying to cope with a, multiple, a multitude of things that you've had to do in your own lives. Or even as part of that relationship. It does show that that's coming to an ending. Because we have judgment. And judgment means a release. I feel there will be a release of struggle. But I feel that this comes for you guys who are especially, you know, I can't see any other way that this would be single person. I feel that this is somebody who's in a relationship. That this is for you guys who are actually in relationships. But I feel that this rebirth comes from uh, weighing up and comes from kind of literally looking at the relationship and what it is that you need to adjust. Because we have the Hierophant and we've got the Two of Pentacles. Now, when you get the Two of Pentacles, it's often a card where we uh, look at reorganising something in our lives, okay? Because it's the balancing card. This guy juggles two pentacles, but he's really what he's doing is weighing up things, literally. Because it's pentacles, it means practical, it means literally, it means re in reality. What is it that I need to do to get this relationship back on track? And it's a committed relationship here. But it's also more than that. The Hierophant represents the values that we hold, the traditions that we're brought up with. What is it that you believe? The Hierophant is a card of uh, somebody who has a set of beliefs. And... What that person needs to do with that set of the beliefs is how do they incorporate it into their everyday lives, into their everyday living, if we were to look at the mundane value of this card. So I feel that, you know, yes, there has been struggle for some of you guys, struggling with family, friends, work, possibly children. There's lots of things that you've been carrying and it's been a burden for you in your relationship. But there is a time of release coming. And it's also, I feel, with the judgment card saying, you've got a wake-up call. You know, you've got a chance because the judgment card not only means rebirth, it means that a time of inactivity, a time of not talking, a time of not communicating with someone is now coming to an end. And I feel that this is, you know, if you were to look at these two cards together, well, the ten of wands, somebody's burying their heads in that wand. So they're burying their head in work. They're burying their head in their responsibilities and the things that they've got to do, but they're not paying attention to everything else around them. They're just buried in this burden. But the wake-up call with the judgment card says, pay attention. The angels are telling you to pay attention. So I feel more than anything, if we were to look at this in terms of the universe and what advice it's actually giving you over the next six months, 
uh, Capricorn, and that is if you are in a relationship where everything else takes precedence over your relationship, then I truly believe that the universe is saying with the judgment card, it's decision time. You have to make a judgment. And the judgment card has come in also to say, pay attention. It's a wake up call. Okay, because this burden that for some of you guys you are immersing yourself in within your committed relationship is no good. And in the end, it will be your undoing. So you've got to pay attention to the signs. That's what the judgment card is. The sign is the trumpet. The sign is the loud horn of that angel screaming at you and telling you to get up and do something. Your dormant stage is with the Ten of Wands. Now, for some people, I might disagree with that because I might say, well, I haven't been dormant. I've been working, I've been doing this, I've been doing that. I've been, you know, this person focuses on the burden. Okay, in a way, the Ten of Wands can be a very good card because it means, to me, it can mean that you are tenacious, you're hardworking, you're really focused, you're not letting anything get in your way except for getting that to those Ten Wands over to the other side. And in that way, to me, the Ten of Wands can mean that this is an excellent card. But in another way, Capricorn, it can also say, I'm burying my head in the burden. I'm not actually seeing the outcome or even a positive outcome or even uh, that there might be a better way to do it. What about if I drop the wands and then maybe pick up the wands two by two and carry them over? Now, it might be a longer journey, but the result that you get will be beneficial instead of struggling on and on and on. And that's why we've got judgment, because it's trying to wake you up and say, you don't need to carry the burden, Capricorn. If this is resonating with you over the next six months, it's going to be telling you, you don't need to carry the burden. Wake up. Your dormancy is with this Ten of Wands, because you're failing to pay attention to anything else but the struggle. This person only pays attention to the struggle. That's where the dormancy is. That's where the not paying attention is in this Ten of Wands. The paying attention is within the judgment card because you're being told there is a loud and clear message coming through. Now, the message could come from your partner. It could come from a friend. It could come in a dream. It could come from the angels, from God, from the universe, from a sign. But it's telling you you're going to need to pay attention to your relationship if you've been letting the struggle become more real than the solution. And how you do that is the Two of Pentacles. Because the Two of Pentacles says, well, you sit down and you literally weigh up what's going on in your relationship. Because you have to weigh up what your values are. What is your inner guidance telling you with the Hierophant? We're not talking about your intuition. Because your intuition sometimes, even though your intuition, I believe in intuition 100%, sometimes intuition can get blurred. Because if we're to have the High Priestess here, the High Priestess would say to me, well, my intuition tells me because I have experienced so many burdens within this relationship, then maybe this is all there's going to be. But with the Hierophant, to me it says, well, what do your values tell you about this relationship? Because burdens can be overcome. We don't have any swords cards in this section here. We've got no nasty cards showing up. But we have a card that suggests spiritual guidance, spiritual values. What is God telling me? And God can be your intuition as well. But sometimes our intuition can lead us astray, especially when we don't pay attention to what is really going on around us and we're so self-absorbed, which is where your Ten of Wands comes in. It's the card of being self-absorbed, being the martyr, feeling that you need to struggle on. Because that's your lot. You've got to just carry on struggling within this relationship. And you don't have to. Because the wake-up call comes with the judgment card. And that wake-up call is the two of pentacles. Right. I'm having problems in my relationship. I've seen the signs. Judgment. It's a wake-up call. I'm exhausted with this ten of wands. And I need rebirth. And renewal. And release from this. So how are you going to release yourself from it? While the universe isn't telling you to end the relationship, 
it's not telling you over the next six months that you're going to be ending your relationship if you've been experienced really experiencing real struggles with your relationship. The universe is basically saying, look at the signs around you. Where is this struggle coming from? Can it be abated? Can it be released? Well, sure it can because we've got judgment. And you release it by being practical, methodical, and looking at the situation for what it is. But also weighing up your own values. What's important to you? What does your inner guidance system tell you about this situation? What do your friends, your family, those who are fully aware of your relationship tell you? For some of you guys, I'm not saying for all, but certainly for some of you guys, I feel that from this self-assessment with that Hierophant and the Two of Pentacles, it will lead you to move slowly towards transformation. Because we have a Knight of Pentacles sitting right here. And when you get the Knight of Pentacles... The Knight of Pentacles is all about loyalty, honesty, steadfastness, being there for your partner, not going anywhere. This is not the card that is saying that things are moving slow, so slow, it's going to end, even though we have death afterwards. The Knight of Pentacles follows death. It follows the transformation. It's a slow Death, but in a good way, because it means a big change is coming in. You know, we've got judgment here, release. That release will encourage some of you guys who are in relationships that have been going through a really difficult time to weigh up what's been happening. And your guidance system is going to be via the Hierophant. So it could be that you go to marriage counselling, for example, which the Hierophant can represent. It could be that you go to a marriage guidance person. It could be that you get advice from your church priest or you go to a group because the Hierophant can often represent groups. This is where two people get guidance from someone who's in the know. To me, this is group work. And if you look at this as well, there are two people, even though they're men, it doesn't matter, men or women. Whatever relationship you're in, heterosexual, homosexual, uh, lesbian, who cares? Whatever this is, you need guidance. So for some of you guys, I believe over the next six months that there will be a real struggle within your relationship that will get to that point where something has to change. End of story. Something has to change. And you will be given a wake-up call to this. Absolutely. And I feel that for some of you guys, it will be a case that you will go to counselling for it. Because we've got two people here in front of priest but the priest in today's terms is not so much a priest it's a counsellor it's somebody who gives you guidance now this could be your own inner guidance but I feel this is more external guidance so I do feel that and um, because there's two of you and it's a relationship reading I do see you and your partner getting some counselling over the next six months and that counsellor is going to help you to work out ways with that two of pentacles of how you can try and address the problem of this. Because you've been given a wake-up call. Now that wake-up call can come in all sorts of ways, shapes and forms. All sorts of ways. It could be your partner going quiet with you. It could be you spending time apart, even though we don't have any necessary, necessarily spending time apart. Uh, card but you could do if I'm looking at certain things here but I do see a time where things need to be rectified in some of your relationships slowly slowly catchy monkey Capricorn because the knight of pentacles isn't going anywhere and it slowly but surely fate follows death and death is the card of change and transformation this isn't an ending this is an ending to the way that things are so that you can move through to a happier time in your relationship. So I do see slow transformation in some of your relationships over the next six months, especially if you've been experiencing burden, because I do believe that you're going to be getting yourself some counselling, and I feel it will be more than just counselling. It's going to be, you know, marriage guidance, that type of thing, speaking to people who can help you to sort your issues out. And I feel from there, you will be slowly but surely moving towards a great transformation. 
Now, for those of you, the second story I feel relates towards uh, those of you who are single. And in all honesty, Capricorn, when I see, saw the cards come out for the single guys, I was kind of like, shit, this doesn't look too good to me. It really doesn't. Um, we've got Nine of Pentacles and this is you, single people. The Nine of Pentacles stands for someone who is on their own, usually within a love reading. So you get cards like Nine of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, the Hermit. They usually traditionally stand for people who are single. The Nine of Pentacles person is usually quite self-assured. They're quite confident. They dress well. They look really good. They live a nice life. They enjoy their gardens. This card, the Nine of Pentacles, can represent the older woman. So a woman in middle age, maybe in her 40s, say 45 upwards. She's a lady that lunches. She got a little bit of money. She's comfortable. Now, I'm not saying that you've got money, but for some of you single Capricorns, male or female, you could be quite comfortable being single. The only thing, as I always say with the Nine of Pentacles, is, well, I don't have love. I've got everything else. Comfortable home. I've got money in the bank. Enough. I've got a nice view. You might not have a garden, actually, but you see where I'm coming from. This is the resourceful individual. However, what struck me about your reading, single guys, is that I would be very careful over the next six months, especially with somebody that you don't trust. Because we've got the Seven of Swords, the card of deception. This could be an air sign male, or air sign female, as it were. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Now... I feel that if this person's a Gemini, they wear two faces. I know that that is probably quite a uh, unfair thing to say because a lot of Geminis will probably say, well, to be Gemini doesn't mean to wear two faces. But I've met lots of Gemini individuals and they can indeed... Or actually, actually let me revert that because I know I'm going to get a load of shit if I say what I'm going to say. But I know a couple of Geminis and sometimes they're up and sometimes they're down. But I would be very careful. We don't have a magician card here or a moon card here that shows somebody who wears two faces. But nevertheless, this person could be potentially quite deceptive. Be very, very careful of that energy. Because I feel within this reading, the universe is trying to advise you that if you're not careful, Capricorn, you could be heading for heartbreak. Because the next two cards that showed up underneath those energies was the Eight of Cups, facing that three of swords look where this person is walking they're walking towards the three of swords heartbreak and i feel that if you are single especially if you're well to do you've got a bit of money in the bank you're comfortable that seven of swords can represent someone who potentially wants to take stuff from you this person when you look at the seven of swords what does it represent to me as a card a lot of the time especially if i'm looking for some at someone well, it represents someone who gets away with murder in broad daylight. Now, I don't mean murder, murder, but they get away with being deceptive in broad daylight. You look at this card. This guy in broad daylight is running off with seven swords, but he's making it look like it's normal. He might be running, but he has a smug look on his face because he's got away with it. He's kind of laughing at the people in the background, like, ha-ha. I got off with five swords and you didn't even notice. Which to me represents somebody who can be two-faced. Or he can be wearing a mask. Because effectively what they're trying to do is make out like their behaviour is completely normal. Just complete. You tell me what thief or how many thieves you know. I know that a lot of people steal from shops and they'll do it in broad daylight. But even then, they'll make it look like it's normal. You'll never know that they've done it. You'll never know they've got special bags with special alarm things on them so they don't get caught walking out of the shop and the alarms get, don't get uh, go off. They've got special ways of putting things into their pockets or, you know, into their coat pockets or their bags. They've got special ways of going undetected. And to me, this card means going undetected, which means that somebody is not being upfront with you because they're trying to make out, and this is the worst type of deceiver, where somebody literally, you can't, is it poker face? 
where somebody literally wears a face and you just can't detect what their motives are because they're getting away with it in broad daylight and this person is. So I feel for some of you, especially if you are middle-aged, I'm sorry to say, I do feel that especially if you're middle-aged, you've got a bit of money in the bank, be careful of who you speak to in the next six months. I'm not telling you not to have relationships, but use your intuition. Use your uh, inner guidance system to guide you. Okay? Don't give everything away too quickly to this individual. Because I don't feel that they'll be very honest with you. I feel that if there are any red flags to someone that comes into your life, and I'm only saying if there's a red flag, okay? Because I always feel that everybody is psychic. Everybody. You know, you can go out on a date with someone, they can be the nicest person going. For example, if I was to go out with a date with a guy, and I'm sitting around the dinner table, and I see a number of waitresses walking around, and they're all in short skirts, and if that guy's got his eyes on every waitress in a short skirt, i.e. he's looking at their legs, I know that that's a red flag. Because he doesn't have his attention on me, he's got his attention on the waitress. Which means that this person probably has a roving eye. So it's all of those little things that you need to pay attention to. Now I'm not saying that if somebody should come in that you need to be like, what's he looking at? Or what's she looking at? Or you need to read everything into what they do. That's not what I'm saying. But there are sometimes there are things about people that can be obvious, but we choose to ignore it. And I feel that it will be the things that you choose to ignore that will lead you to this. The Eight of Cups and the Three of Swords. Walking towards heartbreak. Remember with the tarot when you're doing it, match up your key words. Because that should give you the meaning of two cards together. The Nine of Pentacles, single lady. The Seven of Swords, deceptive man. I do feel for some of you guys there will be a deceptive individual that comes into your life if you're not careful. I just feel that this was a warning from the universe, just the way that those cards just came out. And I do feel that if you go for this person that comes in and you are very kind of, you don't pay attention to the red flags, I do feel that it will end up in a very disappointing way because we have the Four of Cups. And the Four of Cups says... I feel disappointed, I feel let down, and I don't feel that I'm able to go with this. Remember, this is the ace of cup that's being offered to this person. But I do feel for many of you, you'll be able to pick up on this situation very quickly. Because it seems to me with this four of cups, there is a lack of interest in taking up this invitation from this person. And therefore, with the six of swords, with a heavy heart, for some of you guys, you might just decide to move on. Because Six of Swords means moving on. But remember, with the Six of Swords, it's a tricky card. Some readers will say, yes, you move on. But it takes time with that card. Because the swords are in the boat. It means that you've got blurred vision. You're not quite sure. But something is telling you that you need to move on. It's your intuition. It's that deep feeling down in your tummy that says, this isn't right. I do feel... Yes, for some of you single people, I've got to be honest. Because you can't mistake the Three of Swords. You just can't. And you can't mistake the Eight of Cups, especially when it's walking towards another card like the Three of Swords. You just can't. For some of you guys, before we get on to the third story, I've just had a thought. Now... If you are struggling with that Ten of Wands in the first story, there's a wake-up call that comes to you. You might try marriage guidance counselling, weighing up your options with the Two of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles, slow movement towards transformation with the Death card. For some of you guys, it might be a wonderful transformation. Marriage counselling might help you if you are having a difficult relationship with someone. However, for those of you that it doesn't help, again, be careful. Because you might end up single with that nine of cups, nine of pentacles, which allows then for somebody else to come in. If you're not ready, if you happen to walk away from a relationship within the next six months, Capricorn, just make sure, I feel,
that you don't go for the first person that comes into your life. Because it might be just another heartbreak, okay? The death card can mean an ending in a relationship. I am not feeling that there will be an ending for many of you. I feel that you'll work things out if you're in a difficult relationship in story one. But if you do happen to walk away with the death card, because nothing changes if that's the Knight of Pentacles energy. The Knight of Pentacles means loyalty, honesty, sticking around. But it also means non-movement. So if there's no movement in your relationship with that Knight of Pentacles, you decide to move on, end it with the death card. Because this story too has come in so quickly, I would be very careful if you move out of it. Now, I'm not talking about the single people now. I'm talking about if you're in a relationship and you decide to end it with the death card. You've worked things through, you've made a decision and said, this is just not going anywhere with that Knight of Pentacles. I'm deciding to end it with the death card. I'm single again, Nine of Pentacles. Deceptive individual comes in, Seven of Swords. However, you're on a hiding to nothing because the Eight of Cups means I've left a situation behind. It was dissatisfying, i.e. story one. However, where you're walking towards is heartbreak. Which means I feel disappointed, let down. I just cannot accept this relationship. Therefore, with a heavy heart, I need to move on. But it won't be a heavy heart because of this deceptive relationship that comes in. It will be a heavy heart because of what you've lost or what you've left behind. If the Nine of Pentacles situation with the deceptive person does not come in for you, I feel that if you are in a relationship, you've struggled with it in story one, you've decided to leave it with the Knight of Pentacles and the Death card, you'll walk away, but it will be difficult. Because the heartbreak will be right there. You'd have left a, a relationship behind, a dissatisfying relationship with the Eight of Cups. But still, heartbreak will be in front of you. You will be unable to accept new love. Because you're still trying to move on. So there's, two, there's really three scenarios in these two readings that I've just given you. The first one, to quickly reiterate before I move on to the third and final reading is struggle for some of you and you're already in a relationship there is a wake-up call that is coming to you you need to deal with the situation you can't carry on the way that things have been going some of you will go for marriage guidance the hierophant two of pentacles helping you to sort out what adjustments need to be made for some of you you will stay around there is loyalty love honesty and it will bring in your hard work with that Knight of Pentacles will bring in the much needed changes with death. Death does not always mean endings. Sometimes it means that there just needs to be a big transformation. So you're entering, you're leaving one cycle of a relationship behind and you're moving in, you're opening up the door to something bigger and better. So for some of you guys, there is no split here. It is just that you really need to kind of pay attention to what's going on in your relationship, rectify it. It could take some external help. But with that external help, you will make slow progress towards big changes. For some of you who are in a relationship and struggling, yes, struggle ten of, sort, ten of wands. Wake up call, judgment. Seeking guidance, the hierophant. Needing to make some adjustments, two of pentacles or weighing things up. Deciding through weighing things up. Maybe this relationship is going nowhere with the knight of pentacles. Therefore, I need to end the relationship. Some of you might enter a deceptive relationship immediately with somebody else, but be careful of the energy because you could be heading towards heartbreak. Therefore, there is disappointment and you move on. For some of you, it might simply be a case of you end a relationship that you've been struggling with over the next six months. You're leaving it behind with the Eight of Cups. But what you're facing is heartbreak and still having to get through those energies. You won't accept new love because you're still dealing with the problems of your previous relationship. The second story, single people. You're single, vivacious, you're okay, you're sorted. Financially, you're doing all right. If you are a middle-aged woman, not necessarily if you are a middle-aged woman, but you get me, number nines in a reading can mean, especially nine of pentacles can mean a woman who's middle-aged. 
So especially if you're middle-aged, you're sorted, you're financially okay. You might just get a deceiver coming in and he will try and pull the wool over your eyes. I feel that you'll discover this though because you're walking towards heartbreak here. Eight of Cups, Three of Swords. You will feel disappointed, but you will move on. I don't know why I get the impression that second story was really a very strong warning for some of you single people. Just be careful. If you get red flags from someone that comes into your life, and I'm saying don't look for them, but if they are there and it makes you think something, then follow your intuition and please follow your hunches, okay? If you get a red flag, I once, this was about six years ago, uh, I got involved with a guy um, and he looked like, a, there was something about him I just didn't trust. Something about the guy I didn't trust. But I was very vulnerable six years ago, okay? All my family were living in different places. I'd just finished a relationship a year and a half prior with someone. I was more looking for a protector and somebody who would just look after me because I thought that I needed someone to look after me back then. I don't now. I'm fully resourceful. I'm single, but I'm fully resourceful. I can take care of myself and I love my life. But back then, I wasn't the same person. Anyway, I got involved with this man and he gave me everything. He gave me a house to live in. He gave me a job. I ran a shop. He was a very wealthy, uh, entrepreneurial type individual. Uh, he had a lot of big dreams. He inspired me in so many ways. But there was always something about him. Whenever another girl would turn up, he would get excited. And I didn't like that. I just thought, this seems really odd. And also the fact, I won't lie, that he was married. Not married, but in a long-term relationship. And often, if you get involved in affairs, I'm not judging you on it because I've done it myself. You know, you've got to think about, well, if this person can cheat on their partner, then they can cheat on me. And I knew that back then, but I didn't pay attention to my hunches. However, just to quickly round up the story, the angels of the universe sent me a dream about this man. And in the dream, uh, this man, I was on a bridge, and there was all this fire beneath me. And the man was at the other end of the bridge. And he had an axe. And in the dream, he was cutting down the bridge. So with the axe, he was literally cutting down the bridge. And I was rocking like this in the dream on the bridge. And I woke up. And I knew in my heart that the universe was trying to tell me that man will bring you down. I stayed with him for the next, how long were we together? About three years. For the next three years, I stayed, and this was at the beginning of the relationship, I had that dream. But boy, did he bring me down in a lot of ways. And also with my intuition. But I still stayed. And that was a big lesson that I learned. That when you have intuition about someone, pay attention to those hunches if you can. If you can't pay attention to it, if you're simply not sure, get some bloody advice. Friend, reader, whatever it is. But you need to try and pay attention to any intuition and act on it. I'm not saying to end a relationship, but I'm saying follow the trail. And if it seems that this person is going to cause you some heartbreak, end it. But make sure that the hunches that you follow are not based on your fear, but are based on your clarity. And that's all I'm saying for you single people. Your third and final reading uh, is lovely because um, I feel for some of you guys, if you do walk away from a relationship that you've been struggling with, uh, I do feel that you will return to that relationship. You could have a dalliance, as I've said, with someone who's not trustworthy, or it could simply be that you're finding it difficult to move through the pain. For some of you, I do see a reunion on the cards, though, because we have six of the Nine of Swords and Temperance. Now, the Nine of Swords and Temperance can mean healing after sadness, and there will be some healing that comes in for you, whether you get back with this person or not. Okay, but there's definitely healing coming in. You might be worrying because you want to have a reunion with this individual. 
And I feel that because we have the lovers here as well, this signifies a soulmate relationship, something that is deeply attractive. We've got the lovers and temperance. Those two cards alone can often represent a reunion, especially if you get the two of cups with it because it's even stronger. But for me, I do feel for some of you guys who are worried, still crying, still upset, there will be a reunion that comes in because we've got that two of cups and, tem and sorry, the temperance card and the lovers. For some of you guys, I feel that um, there will be the strong building of a relationship. There's going to be success in building on a relationship. We've got this emperor card. And when you get an emperor in a reading, it means that you're building something sustainable and stable. And with this comes success. We've got the six of wands. Now, you might be a little bit worried, some of you guys, and I don't quite know why, because we've got the Nine of Swords showing here. But we have Temperance with that card as well. So it shows that after the worry, there comes healing. There comes being able to work things through. And then we have the Lovers and the Queen of Wands. This is great passion. In a love reading, the Queen of Wands means a great passionate relationship. And the Lovers means deep attraction. Deep attraction and passion. After you've worked things through with the Temperance card. You might be worried around a husband or an, uh, older, an older man, somebody that you're involved with. Because we've got the Empress sitting above your head, the Nine of Swords. So I feel that for some of you, there might be somebody who's greatly on your mind over the next six months. Somebody that you're involved with. But I do feel that there will be real success as you overcome a challenge with this particular person. Because if you look at these cards, we have the Emperor. This is the man here. It could be an Aries individual. It doesn't have to be, though. It's just somebody with great power over you. And then he's sitting right above, if you can see... The Nine of Swords. So it's almost like you are thinking this person is putting a great weight on your head. Can you see that? He sits right above your head, Capricorn. This is someone that you are deeply worried about in a relationship. However, you seem to resolve these problems because we have the Six of Wands, which means that after a time of trouble comes success. It could be that you are reunited with this person, temperance. Or you overcome and there is healing within a relationship. The attraction, the strong soulmate relationship is back. And there is great passion indeed with that Queen of Wands. Some of you, yes. There could be worry over a three-way relationship because we do have the Three of Swords right before that Nine of Swords. And we've got the Seven of Swords guy directly above it and he's looking straight across at the Emperor. But I feel that if there is any little bits of cheating at all that any of you guys are involved with, I don't feel it will last long because I do feel that you will reunite with your partner. Some very interesting stories going on here. We're going to reiterate one more time so we've got it straight. Some of you guys, though, struggle. There's going to be a wake-up call. There'll be some relationship counselling, I believe, where you'll work out your problems with that two of uh, pentacles. It will be a slow move to a big transformation. But if you take it gently and one step at a time, you'll get there. Because we have the knight of pentacles and death. For some of you, though, yes, there will be struggles. Wake-up call, relationship counselling, or trying to seek some guidance. Working things out with the two of pentacles. You might just feel that this relationship has come to a dead end because the Knight of Pentacles can often represent a dead end. Therefore, the relationship has to end. For some of you, you might quickly get involved with someone who's a bit of a liar. And though you've walked away from this relationship, so reading one is behind you, that represents the Eight of Cups, you could still be walking towards heartbreak. Because you're disappointed and you decide to move on. I've just thought as well with the Seven of Swords, for some of you guys, you might be fooling yourself that you can get involved with someone else. But really, what you're trying to do 
is having a relationship on the rebound because you simply can't affect uh you can't uh entertain the idea of new love so therefore you just try and move through the prior breakup that you've had if you're single be careful especially if you've got money that type of uncomfortable lifestyle be careful around a liar i feel deceiver seven of swords because you could be walking with the Eight of Cups towards heartbreak with the Three of Swords. It will leave you feeling disappointed and trying to find out the reasons why. Trying to move on, but it will still be difficult, Six of Swords. And finally, for some of you guys, there might be a person that you're worrying over. The Emperor sits directly above the Nine of Swords head, which means that this person to me is very much on your mind. However, this will be overcome with the Six of Wands. There'll be a coming together of souls, reuniting as people together. Deep attraction, the lovers. And the reignition of a very, very passionate relationship, the Queen of Wands. If any of you guys have cheated in a relationship or will cheat within the six months, next six months, just know that this won't last long. You will feel guilt, Nine of Swords, but you'll be able to wind things up and work them through with the Temperance card. And for me, the Lovers and the Temperance card say reunion, and the Queen of Wands is a deeply passionate relationship. That is your reading, Capricorn, for your love reading for between July and December 2016. Uh, let me know your thoughts if you go through this during those months. But I would like to say thank you very, very much for using Carol's Universe. And I will see you on your next on your live spread reading. And then will be your July 2016 general reading. So I'll see you guys then. Take care.